Hey folks, welcome to Roll of Law, a lawyer talking about geek stuff. In the comments of my last video, some people wanted me to talk about alignment. And alignment is a concept that has been in many different editions of Dungeons and Dragons, although in 5th edition it's kind of falling out of favor. There's a lot fewer spells or magic items or monster abilities or these kinds of things that directly affect alignment or that are triggered off of alignment. And that's probably a good thing. Alignment isn't like strength or dexterity or your skill proficiencies. Those things tell you what your character can and can't do. If your character's strength is three, they're not going to be able to lift a Buick. It's just outside the realm of what they can what they can manage. Alignment, on the other hand, isn't a statistic like that. It doesn't tell you what your character can and can't do. Instead, it should be viewed as more of an indicator. People are probably misusing alignment or using it badly when they use it in the same way that they might use strength. You should never say, listen, my character is going to be doing this because they're lawful good. Instead, it's because my character does these things, that's what makes them lawful good. Another way to look at it is to think of alignment like the fuel gauge in your car. You know, if your fuel tank is empty, then the gauge says empty. But it's not that the gauge controls the fuel tank. You can't reach in there and push the little, you know, whatever indicator over to the side to full and magically cause your tank to fill with gas. So alignment is really a simplistic way of describing a more complex personality. And it can be useful in that sense because it can allow you to tell other people about this sort of general tendencies of your character. So alignment in Dungeons and Dragons is split along two axes. And the first axis is the lawful to chaotic axis. And the second is the good to evil axis. And when you combine those, you get nine separate sort of options. Everything from lawful good to chaotic evil. And when you think about how these things work, keep in mind that nobody is super simplistic. Everybody's got contradictions. So I might say that Captain America is a lawful good character. He's somebody who believes in institutions and the value of them, and he works to support those things. And he also works to support good. But in some cases, he may have to go off grid and not, you know, and defy institutions if those institutions are doing bad things. The good outweighs the lawful there. You can see that there's complexity to these things. And when we look at the law to chaos axis, I tend to think of this as just how do you view these kinds of structures? You know, do you think that rules and order are necessarily good things that are useful to people, especially yourself, but to people in general, but perhaps if that's something that you care about, or are you more a person who believes in freedoms? and doing what you what you think is best, regardless of what the rules are. So that can, you know, and these things can be good or evil. Captain America is a lawful character who is good. If you look at Disney's Aladdin, Jafar is probably a lawful evil character. He likes the whole idea of, you know, this society where there's a ruler and these structures he just wants to manipulate that as much as he can so that he can be the guy who is on top and thereby benefit from that. So when you also think of, you know, demons in some mythology where they're very much bound to contracts and agreements and this kind of thing. And even though they're out to do horrible things to you, they're not willing to defy those agreements. That is sort of characteristic of lawful evil. A chaotic evil character, on the other hand, is if they're making an agreement like that with you, it's probably not going to bind them in any way. They're probably not going to worry about it. They'll just look for an opportunity to, to stab you in the back. In fact, the whole reason why they're signing this agreement might be to put you at ease so that you don't see the knife coming. A chaotic good character is somebody who may not care about the rules and order and so forth, but is out there doing heroic things in the shadows. So the, that's sort of the law to chaos axis. The evil to good axis tends to be a measure of altruism and who you're looking out for. 
evil characters tend to be looking out for themselves primarily and are willing to potentially harm other people in order to get those benefits. Now, that's not the only way to be evil. There's all sorts of options there. An evil cultist who might actually ultimately plan to sacrifice themselves for that cause may still be evil because they want to harm other people in the process. So evil can be a little more complex than that. Good tends to be altruism. How do you, you know, do you look to help people? If you see somebody suffering, does that call out to you to be something that you want to correct or to, you know, help? So adventurers tend to be towards the good axis of things, but they may not. I mean, they may have some rough edges. If you're watching Lawyers and Dragons, uh, Gimlet is chaotic neutral. He isn't really big on laws. He kind of thinks that they're there to be broken, that they're there as a crutch for people who maybe aren't as clever as he is or he thinks he is, because right now he's in a bit of a pickle and I don't honestly know how he's going to get out of it because he got himself into some trouble. But, you know, and he's neutral because while he's willing to sort of steal and so forth, at the end of the day, he's also kind of soft-hearted. If he sees somebody suffering, he's going to be like, I guess we got to do something about this. You know, he's the guy who, when thing when the chips are down and, you know, he's looking at something, he'll stand up for what's right, even as he's maybe throwing some stuff in his pockets. You know, so he's not a, a sort of pure as the driven snow kind of character. He's got some complexity. But the chaotic neutral is, you know, as I was mentioning before, if you're just starting with chaotic neutral and you say, okay, now my, how does my character behave because they're chaotic neutral? I think that's the wrong way to go. Gimlet is chaotic neutral because those are the elements of his personality and not because I just picked those, you know, those entries off the table. The other thing is that there's certain, um, sort of bad habits that it's easy to fall into. And I think that they're largely driven by people looking at the alignment chart and picking something and deriving their personality from that instead of the other way around. You know, if you're playing a chaotic neutral character who's just, I'm so random, you're going to wear on people really fast. It's not a fun concept for the other people at the table. Um, similarly, somebody who is true neutral, who's just, like the neutrality people from Futurama, you know, I don't care about anything. I will not take a strong position on anything. Why are you adventuring? Why are you, why is this happening? So that might not be the most fun concept for everyone else. If they then have to spend all of their time, um, dragging people along and dragging people into, uh, you know, Nobody wants to have to be the people who pull you all the time. Um, similarly, playing evil concepts at a table has to be done with a certain amount of finesse and skill to be done in a way that doesn't, um, doesn't drive everyone else up the wall and potentially doesn't end friendships. I would suggest that this is something you should talk to your table with, you know, before you, before you do it unless you're playing a just evil campaign. And that can be fun sometimes, just as, you know, let's play some bad guys. Cool, um, that can be a fun concept. But if you're the evil guy in a group of good players, you're gonna probably wanna talk to people and you're gonna wanna think about how does this end, right? Because what is the end point of this? If you are secretly plotting against the other characters, eventually you're not going to be part of that group anymore. And you got to think about how that happens and whether that's something that you are ready to deal with and the other players are ready to deal with. So it can take, um, it can take more maturity than people think it will. And if you don't, if you're not ready to bring that to the table, I would warn against evil characters. I would say it's not a good concept as a first character concept. Anyway, I hope that brings a little bit of uh, clarity to alignment. 
as I said, I think it's good that it's being less used in 5th edition. I don't know if we'll see it appear at all in future editions. It may end up uh, disappearing, but it's still a useful way to kind of reflect what's in your character's heart. But ultimately, what's in your character's heart needs to be the uh, needs to be the consideration. You should be playing a character who is more rich and has more depth to them than the alignment chart can properly indicate. All of the characters you watch on TV and so forth have that additional complexity, that additional, you know, those layers. And so for every single one of them, uh, if, it's, if it's a character that you're not sitting there going, man, this is a one-dimensional boring character, every single one of them will have an alignment tendency, you know, that you could probably plot out onto that chart but they will probably also sometimes do things that defy uh, those expectations. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this video. I hope it brought some clarity here and uh, hope to see you next time.